route or something like that in this thing. Cool. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> we kept Sean out last night till a little later than he usually stays up. <laughs> yeah. When we got here, he was like, I, I, I didn't think we were going to go. I don't know. I don't, but uh, he's up and ready to ride. Yeah, I'm up um, and running. Last couple of trips, we haven't gone out uh, deep enough for Sean. Our plan and hope is to go outside and do some drop fishing and run some live baits outside the reef. Uh, well, we'll see what the weather and the swell and chop is like out there. It's a little bit windy today, but we're going to get out on the water no matter what and get into some fish. So uh, adventure is going to be a good one. I hope you guys uh, are ready to rock. Big ass bag of popcorn sitting on your couch. Roll up, make yourself a cocktail, do whatever it is you do. You're watching the bike. I just hooked up into something big. Only in Belize, man. How cool is that? They're epic eating fish. Look at that beautiful fish. <laughs> we out here. Jaybow probably broke his rib climbing in the boat the other day. How's it feel? Like a, uh, like a beat up old man, dude. I suck. Yeah, yeah, I just flopped right onto the, because of my gimpy arms for falling down, I flopped myself into the boat, kind of landed on my rib cage and heard a large pop. And uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's a little bruised up, but it's fine. We out here. Guys, we have an absolute giant pile of sardines. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freak out trying to keep them all alive. <laughs> but we got sardines. Let's go get some big fish. Yeah. We are outside of the reef in the deep blue sea. We just pulled up to a drop spot. We were gonna drop anchor there, and we sent down like two, 300 feet of anchor rope, and we didn't hit bottom. So we gotta drive in a little bit closer so that we can drop anchor in like 152 instead of like three. It's also a slight drift, and uh, anchor's not real, real heavy, so, uh, you know, we gotta be in shallow enough water for that two, 300 foot rope to hit bottom and give us still a pretty, a uh, decent angle up to the boat. It can't go straight up to the boat or the boat will get pulled under by the surge and stuff. So uh, we're gonna find a slightly shallower place, pull up and drop anchor there and get into some fishing. So what's going on right now is we've got this super long rope. That's the anchor rope. The anchor rope is running through the middle of this buoy because you can't pull up 200 feet of anchor rope. It'll just kill your arms. And so you gun it in the boat and that pulls the anchor up to the buoy. Then you can pull the buoy in, and then you start feeding the rope back through the buoy. So the anchor is just dropping now quickly through the buoy. Manolo is feeding the rope through it like a giant bobber, a giant sliding bobber. The anchor is going to drop all the way to the bottom and lock up so that uh, we don't have to manually pull up a 200 foot anchor cord. And that there's a buoy out there so that the, the rope goes up to the buoy and then back to you. So with your swell, you've got like a kind of regular calm line going out to the buoy rather than one straight down anchor to the bottom where that can actually pull the nose of your boat down 
if a big wave came through or something. We're putting a 40 pound live tuna underneath this giant slide bobber as our bait today. <laughs> Again. What, how dupe it is? Yeah. What if it stops any second? Well, <laughs> it stopped. Right? It stopped right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I hope it holds up. Yeah, right? All right, so we just got to our next spot. We're hoping that the anchor locks up and takes hold. And if it does, then we are good to sit and fish for a bit. So we got to drift for a couple of minutes so the boat gets down current and wind from the anchor and the buoy. And uh, hopefully it locks up and we get to start smashing them. What do I got? What do I got? Guys, camera was pointing the wrong way. You guys didn't get to see me catch it, but look how badass this little grouper is. Look at the bright colors on the bottom of its jaw. How crazy is that? Look at those red spots. What an unreal fish. Beautiful, beautiful little grouper. Uh, these ones don't get that much more giant than this, huh? These little red spotted ones, the little rock they, groupers? They, they get about 10 pounds. They get it would be about 10 pounds. No, no 300 pounds like some of the Goliaths and stuff like that out here do. But uh, this little grouper we're gonna eat it's like uh, such a primo eating fish. Uh, j Bow was just saying he wants to eat a little grouper on this trip. So I think this one's gonna be our dinner. Look at, look at those unreal, bright, beautiful red spots. It almost looks like a coral trout or something like that, this thing. Cool, cool fish, super cool. Another, another fish that he just recently yeah. ate, a little grunt. <laughs> just threw up a little grunt. All right, sorry buddy, you're so beautiful. It almost hurts to kill you, but I know you're gonna taste great, and I'm gonna put you down real quick. Thank you very much for giving us your life, buddy. Uh, you're so beautiful, you're so much cooler than a lot of the little bitch ass snappers and grunts and stuff that we catch. What a badass, beautiful uh, little grouper. That's gonna be our dinner, I'm uh, hyped on it, so. Well, I just cleaned that little fish up real fast, and look how much he changed color already. Totally went completely white, and like it's still got some beautiful wild red spots, but like look, the whole fish is completely white now. It's definitely dead, it has no guts inside of it, and it's been brained, and it's still like flapping just a tiny little bit. That's like those nerves. Yeah, look, that's all just nerves. This fish is definitely 100% dead. How wild is that? Completely dead for sure, you guys. It's not just like it's still alive and suffering a little bit. He's been domed and he's been and he's been gutted. <laughs> Cute little grouper. Oh. Look at this beautiful little grouper. Bright red spots on his face. Cute little guy. He's getting a part in. That one's definitely too small. Bye little buddy. Good fish. We got 
something on, guys. Some kind of bottom fish. Then a shark. Yep, then a shark. Shark? Yep. Caught a shark, guys. Is this going to the empanada booth or are we setting this free? Little guy, you know what kind of shark this is? It's a reef shark. It's a reef shark. Check out this badass little shark, guys. Just a little tiny guy. Got to be careful still because he's probably got pretty gnarly teeth. But cute little shark. Found him. He's getting turned into empanadas. Perfect little reef shark. There's a lot of these around here. Reef sharks and black tips are the kind of shark you want to eat if you're going to eat sharks off the reef. And uh, that's get turned into empanadas. If you've never had shark empanadas, I suggest you try it. Oh, oh, oh. Lala. Good fish. Hopefully it's that mackerel. Looks like it. Shark again. Shark again. No, really? Oh. Well, since it was a little shark, not the end of the world that he got off, but he would like to see that. Oh, the bird? Yeah. What, he went and he landed on yeah. the barrel? Yeah, he's in the last show. Here he is. <laughs> well, you guys, behind us I had a, I had a buoy. I had a float on a long line to a, to a, a live yellowtail. And the line was just kind of hanging off the back onto the little float. And this rig of her dove down towards the line. Got a little bit wrapped up in it. Oh man, he's not hooked, he's just wrapped up in the line. But he's dragging the yellowtail around and the float. And now, <laughs> no, that was the grouper. I was gonna say another bird just got the yellowtail, but no, no, the, the little grouper just got swooped out there that uh, we just let go. Sorry, little grouper, but uh, yeah, I got a frigate bird all wrapped up in the line here. So we're gonna have to land this frigate bird real quick. Oh man. It's kind of a good fight. Yeah. Catch me a mace, frigate bird. It's a totally different experience fighting up. I've never like had to fight something flying above me. Other times birds have got tangled up, they usually kind of just come down and you deal with them there. He's flying above me. too long. I don't know if you guys saw the corner right there where I actually pulled it into the boat, but uh, he was really easy to untangle and I just thought I would show him off to you guys a little bit before I let him go. This is a frigate bird. It's the same kind of bird that you see swooping down and eating the fish out of her hands or like me feeding sardines and they're a really cool, super beautiful, badass bird. So I'm glad this guy didn't get hurt. It's got big, big, awesome wings. Look at these big big giant amazing wings and there he goes he'll be totally fine not hurt at all just had line like wrapped around him a little bit and you know i fought him down to the boat um he's flying off over there happy as could be Let's see if he wants fish I, I don't think he wants anything to do with us actually just uh yeah buddy Hey, that's a good fish. We caught a pargy on the last trip, and they're a cool fish. They look a lot like what the Aussies call a snapper, even though I think it's slightly different fish. They have a really gnarly big mouth on them, and look at the head on that thing. That's a, that's a monster fish. Beautiful, wild, big fish, huge jaws on it. That's the best fish of the day, but I have a feeling we're gonna get something bigger than this guy. When you have such an operation to drop anchor, you can't just switch spots like every 20 minutes like we do uh, when fishing in the back of the island or river fishing or something like that. Since it's so deep, you're often waiting for some of the fish to come over to you. You're in a little bit of a desert. 
and then you drop and you drop some lines down and then you're hoping that something big comes over to your area after you kind of stir up some of the local local life it's becoming harder and harder to haul up yeah. too we might have a fish on small one what do they call that kind this is a it's not a yellow wire right no this is um Black wing. That right there is a black wing snapper. It's a beautiful fish, right? It's all pink. See the little black on its fins? Make it a, makes it a black wing. And the little thing in the back? Yeah. It's feeling like maybe there's something on it. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. Jack are delicious, delicious. That's a hamachi right there. A lot of people think hamachi is yellowfin tuna, but hamachi is actually yellowfin amberjack. This is a slightly different kind of amberjack, but still, that's an amberjack right there, and they are very, very delicious. Knock one down. Finally caught a fish. Yeah. What does Mr. Manolo have? Still on, buddy. That one's uh, same, same kind. Yeah. From deep, you can see it's blowing up. Yeah. Look, see how that one's eyes are popping out, yeah. you guys. The depth. This one came from the depth. Its belly's blown up and its eyes are popping out because it came from, you know, whatever super super deep water. Came up too quick. It's got a case of the bends. Yeah. All right, way to knock a good fish. Oh, good bites. Not sure what we got guys, but we got something good. Oh yeah, dragging it up from the deep. This rod doesn't have the most action, it's really a trolling rod, but it has enough line to reach the bottom in these deep depths. So it makes a decent bottom fishing rod. Since it's so short, you don't have a lot of leverage action as far as like lift and pull and lift and pull. You're kind of just pulling. Oh, let's go. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're into our mono. Whatever it is, isn't too big, but it's a good fish. Another one? Another amberjack. Yeah. Two. So that's why it was so heavy, guys. I got to double up on one rod. Two amberjacks. Those are beautiful. They're such good eating. They're like top table fare. They're, that's, that's what they make hamachi out of. Anytime you've had hamachi in a sushi restaurant, it's been an amberjack. Yes. Hey, hey you got one. Looks like we're on a school of amberjack. That's great. Super fun. That's a, that's a trigger fish, that's what these guys call a turbot. Yeah. Look at that, look at that big, big old trigger fish. He's free. Cool fish, throwing him back in. Trigger fish aren't horrible eating, but they're protected here because they're a coral grazer and they help uh, support the reef, so. Had, had at least 
least a hey, barracuda around right this five sardinia. So I wouldn't be too surprised if that's what it was, but it could be any number of fish. <laughs> it's, it's a trigger fish, trigger fish. hooks in the side, so it felt monster. He must have been chewing on my sardine and somehow yeah. hooked himself in the side. What they call a turbot. They call him a trigger fish because this right here, you can't move, it won't move at all. The trigger on the top, that thing is stuck. I can push as hard as that as I want and it's not gonna move. That little button right there, oop, oop, oop. Some kind of lock. That's why it's called a trigger fish because it has a little trigger. We don't really like them though because uh, they're protected around here, which is cool and all for the reef and for the trigger fish. Support it, uh, support the whole ecology of it. But they come in and they eat your bait, like bam, 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 bam. You can't harvest them, so they're just there and they just start to thrive more and more and more. They just eat your bait right off of your hook before you even get it down there sometimes. I was really hoping that uh, live sardine getting slammed was gonna be a good fish. Barely hit the bottom. Let's go, not a trigger fish. Trigger fish. <laughs> <laughs> Felt so much bigger than he is. He's got this giant mouth. Really cool grouper. He's not gonna make it because we don't have um, a submerging tool here. Just like pop something on him and then just like drop him back down. Um, sometimes, but uh, it's not sticking out his mouth. Like, we have like a, okay, a bladder that pops out. We can try putting him back in and see if he makes it down, but I think that he's, he's pretty toast. See his eyes are all the way out of his head. What a beautiful fish though. Sorry, guy. Oh, he totally just dove and survived. Amazing. Oh look, there you go. He just swam to the bottom and it looks like he's probably gonna make it. Righteous. Oh, well, <laughs> no. Nope. Looks like that frigate bird just picked him off the surface and he's not gonna make it.
a Spanish or Sierra mackerel, they call them here. They call a mackerel a Spanish mackerel like everywhere in the world. Here they have Spanish slash Sierras and kingfish, like a king mackerel. This one's those smaller ones, like a Spanish or Sierra. All right. There he goes. What are you doing? He's <laughs> <laughs> got real sharp teeth and a whole Christmas tree of hooks hanging out of his mouth. So you want to be real careful not to get some of that steel up in your hand or some of those teeth up in your hand. Yeah, first fish on the new trolling rod. All right, we're getting another ballyhoo out. See if we can't stick one more mackerel. Maybe get into a lucky wahoo. Maybe a king mackerel, that'd be real fun. Oh, fish. Fish. Good fish. right now. Right? <laughs> well you guys at the end of the night it got dark on us out there and as we were coming in we got our big fish of the day we got a slam and um, there might be a little bit of audio or something like that of us fighting it in the dark if you don't see any of it because it's pitch black, you probably only hear my voice. But we just stuck a monster barracuda. We'll show it off in the light when we get back to the spot. Right there, but uh, this was that fish that we got at the end of the day. Yeah. That's a pretty big barracuda. Supposed to be really good for you. For everyone. Big fish. We also put away a bunch of these little little jacks. They looked like uh, amber jacks. They looked way more like little amber jacks when we caught them. They had, you know, those lines on the head. I was gonna look it up last night, but I didn't. I'll uh, put a little disclaimer at the bottom of exactly what they are. Maybe a false amber jack or something like that. We stuck two of these black wing snappers. They're like red deep water snappers. Uh, that right there, beautiful little spotted grouper. The Pargy, badass Pargy with his giant coral crushing jaws. And then these two beautiful Spanish mackerel. Uh, you heard me saying on the boat yesterday probably that there's a bunch of different types of mackerel that people call Spanish mackerels all over the world. Um, the Sierra and Spanish are basically the same fish, but they have slightly different markings. And um, you'll see like bright yellow spots on like the little Sierras. You just hear people 
basically calling like all types of mackerel, Spanish mackerel around. But there is a Spanish mackerel and a Sierra mackerel. They're basically the same fish, it's just East Coast, West Coast. But um, pretty good score for a day. Um, not as many fish, but they're all bigger fish. So there's gonna be some good fillets in here. Look at that staking process that Manolo just put on this barracuda. Look at all those stakes on a string. How many is there? Probably 20. Nice big barracuda steaks. Beautiful steaks. Look at the teeth on this thing, you got it. They're pretty razor sharp, right? They're gnarly. I mean, they're gnarlier than a dog's tooth. Oh, yeah. They just go through things, bro. Yeah. What a, what a mean fish head. Hope you guys enjoy watching us catch this pile of fish. And uh, there'll be more of uh, the bite coming out shortly. Yoo!